Now, let me get into what happened this morning. I didn't stay at my house last night. I was visiting family out in Lakeway. We stayed out there last night. Uh, I got in the car to come into work, and I was driving around in a neighborhood, in a neighborhood, and saw five, six, seven, it was probably about seven, I didn't have time to count them all, squad cars, uh, state police squad cars, and they had one of those little tents set up on the side of the road, and uh, I turned into a neighborhood and, and parked by somebody's driveway, and I walked up and I politely said, hey, how you doing, troopers? What's going on? Because, again, I, I wanted to see. And, of course, my iPhone, I checked it as I pulled up. It was out of batteries. Uh, it's an old one, so the batteries burn out. It only takes a charge for about 45 minutes. And it was dead, or I would have taken photos with it or, or recorded audio to document what was going on. But I just pulled over, and I do this all the time. Uh, one time I saw a bunch of police and, 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 and news on 360, and I pulled off uh, at a restaurant, walked over. The police, Austin police, didn't run up and get in my face. And I talked to the media, and I said, well, I said, what's going on? Very politely, and they said, somebody keeps turning the gas on uh, in the neighborhood and turning the gas off. And uh, they actually then, hey, can we get a quote from you about what you think of this? And so I was on the local news. Some folks saw that uh, earlier this year. But I do that all the time. Uh, if I see a police checkpoint, whether it's on I-35 or in a neighborhood, uh, it's been ruled by the Supreme Court and state courts that it's illegal. And uh, I pull up and walk over and I ask questions. And, and I'm polite. I stay back at a distance and say, hey, they come over. What's going on? And usually uh, they don't treat me like a slave. They, they treat their boss, the, the citizen, uh, that pays their bill. I've had cops tell me, oh, no, I pay taxes, too. I pay my salary. No, the government takes two private sector jobs for every government job. Get it through your head, okay? We pay your salary and you know it, okay? So there's this arrogance, kind of like Obama's aunt saying, I'm an illegal alien, and you owe me welfare. You owe me citizenship. It's this arrogance. So I'm going to go through exactly what happened, then I'm going to walk through how this affects everybody. And I was already going to talk about this today. It's funny this happened. So I'm driving down this side street by a neighborhood, a little two-lane road, and there's all these state police milling around. And it looked like what I saw a few months ago when I went to Slitterbahn in New Braunfels. And we had booked it again, a little motel there to take my kids. But it was such a police state, I canceled it. And I said I was going to cancel it, and I probably won't go back to Slitterbond because the police are so bad down there. And But, of course, you can't run. I mean, they're putting it in everywhere. But I, I noticed every day that when people were getting off the river, the police were taking photos of them. They had tents set up. They were taking people to jail. And I drove through one of those, and my um, inspection sticker was out. I hadn't noticed it, pulled me over, gave me a ticket, whatever. But but the issue is the illegal aliens can drunk drive. They're above the law. They're, the, the police are told, leave them alone. So again, I'm, I'm the mark. I'm the citizen that deserves all of this. So it looked like one of those checkpoints. I knew the state police were trying to put them in place uh, again in the state of Texas. So I pulled off, pulled down a side street about 60, 70 yards down, uh, even thought about it. I said, well, you know, this is mailboxes and people's houses. I can park here. I, I knew they might try to say I was parked illegally, you know, any way to get you in their system. That's why they pass laws, $15 million fines for garage sales. It's about, you know, $5,000 fines for tomatoes being grown in your backyard. It's about getting you in the system. That's what tyranny is. And I walk up, and there's all these state police officers standing around, probably six, seven, eight, nine, maybe more, but that's just who I could see. They were by the way, they were parked out in the road. They weren't even parked all the way on the shoulder. So it's a two-lane road, and people were having to stop because you couldn't drive two cars down the road because the state police were all parked haphazardly halfway in the road. You, know, you see this all the time. It's almost like it's their enjoyment to block traffic and train you the slave that they can do whatever they want. But I walk up politely, and I'm about 30 yards away, and they say, what do you, do? You know, what do you want? And uh, this state police officer starts walking over to me, and he literally was about as tall as Yosemite Sam. Folks, I'm 5'10". I'm not into how tall you are, how big you are. But there is that Napoleonic complex. And the feds have admitted they've written handbooks to hire police now with only under 100 IQ. And they like to hire short ones. This is on record who have a Napoleonic complex. You'll notice most of the commanders now are barely pushing five feet because they got something to prove. And this guy who literally looked like Yosemite Sam. I mean, he was so little, I thought he was a munchkin, because I'm not big, and he came up to my chest. I mean, I had like a foot on him, 
Yosemite Sam comes up, and I said, how you doing? And uh, he said, uh, who are you? Like a drill instructor, who are you? And I said, oh, I'm Alex Jones. He didn't know who I was. I said, I'm Alex Jones, and I, I was still being nice. And I said, hey, what are you guys doing? Is this a checkpoint? And he goes, none of your business. Get out of here. Just pointed his finger at me and showed his teeth. I mean, how dare a scumbag citizen think this is a free country? You don't talk to a king, a savior, a lord. He said, get in your car and get out of here. And I said, well, you're not being very nice. And I, I said, I just walked over here and politely asked you, uh, what you're doing. And he said, none of your business. I said, get out of here. And he said, you're parked illegally. And I looked back and knew I wasn't. But here he was. This is tyranny, the nature of tyranny. And he was looking like I was about to get scared. And I said, why don't you take me to jail and show me I'm your slave? And then he kind of went, starts putting his hand on his gun and starts... I said, get, get out of here, get out of here. And more of the state police start coming over, and some of them were smiling and looking. Obviously, some of them knew who I was. And I said, I'm going to go. But I said, this is why America's dying and falling apart, because you're on a power trip. And I said, I knew when I came over here you were going to treat me like this, and I was as polite as I could be to you. But I said, you listen and you tune into this radio frequency, the local station we're on. I said, you tune in. You tune in one hour from now, and I got in my car, and boy, they were there getting my license plate and reading it and smiling at me. They love their database. They love it. They love the control. No, oh, it was so good. And then once I got out on Main 620, here came a sheriff's department car. That I guess they'd called in, and they got right behind me and were following me, and I was trying to get my phone charged and finally got it working and called Jaron because I had a, you know, in-car charger finally got it to boot up and I said Jaron you know who knows what's going to happen to me but they left me alone but they followed me all the way down 620 all the way down 620 just let me know listen you don't get uppy with uppity with us it's like that movie ants where the grasshoppers are sitting around they go we got all this food boss you know why are we going back to fight with those ants we don't need them to be our slaves and he said, those puny little ants outnumber us a thousand to one. And if they ever figure that out, it's over for us. And so I'm talking to Jaron this morning. He goes, well, guess what happened to me? He's, he's taking some folks to the airport at 4 a.m. this morning. He pulls in to gas up and he goes in to get a Gatorade. And this guy's trying to break into his car. He goes out and starts yelling at him saying, stop. The guy starts trying to attack him. Jaron knocks him out, yells at him for about three minutes. Knocks him out. After the guy swings him a couple times and Jaron, you know, they missed him. A thug missed him. And then Jaron knocked him out, you know, punched him in the nose. And the police pull up a few minutes later when the guy's you know, getting up off the ground. And the first few police show up, and, and then it's a female cop, and the guy gets up and starts charging her, so she pulls her taser out. He's clearly whacked out of his mind on drugs. And then another cop pulls up and goes, yeah, I heard you screaming and saw that going on. They were right by the access road. The cop, one cop saw it and just kept on driving because it wasn't an old lady he could pull over and make a little money off of. No, it was a guy being attacked in a parking lot at 5 a.m. after dropping friends off at the airport. So there you go. I'm going to come back and I'm going to talk to Officer, oh, I'm sorry, Sergeant Baker. I forgot part of the story. <laughs>